Music Fundamentals, Week 13, The Score, Orchestration. I'm Richard Freeman Toole. At age 12, when I wrote my first string quartet, I had never yet seen a score. All I'd ever seen was parts, like these. Each one of these parts is what each one of the players in the orchestra plays. And they're all different, and uh, they all add up to something, but, uh, but nobody plays the same part, obviously. Um, I had only seen parts, so when I tried to write my quartet, I wrote the first violin part on one page, and the second violin part on another page, and the viola part on another page, and the cello part on another page, and, and I had to keep juggling back between them to figure out how, how to play it. Little did I know that there was such a thing as a score. My teacher told me, I was flabbergasted, to discover that you had something like this, where all the parts are all together. All the way down to there is the whole band, and they play this far, and then they come down here and start again and go this far. Well, isn't that cool? A score is all the parts together, and a musician should be able to look at a score and hear the music in his head, just like a recording. The remainder of this lecture will mostly consist of a review of different types of scores, from the simplest to the most complicated. The simplest and the most common one is the piano score. There's lots and lots of piano music, and uh, so there's lots and lots of this type of score. The piano score is merely two stabs of the piano part, right and left hands, written in treble clef on the top and bass clef on the bottom. Notice the so-called brace that joins the two stabs. The brace shows that the parts so braced together are related somehow. The piano brace is normally used for piano scores only. Here's a close-up of the two types of braces. The piano brace up above is a kind of a curly kind of thing, and the brace that groups together groups of instruments in an instrumental score uh, looks more kind of spiky. The, the bottoms and tops turn out, but it's a straight line. It makes it very clear uh, where the divisions are between the instrumental sections. Perhaps the most familiar type of score even more familiar than the piano score is the vocal score. If you've ever looked at a rock song or sung a Christmas carol, you've probably seen a vocal score. It is merely the voice part and the piano part put together. Notice the key signature on each staff. The F sharp on the two treble staves is in a different position from the one in the bass staff. That's because F sharp is in a different place on those two clefs. All the stabs include the key signature and the time signature. The piano part and the voice part have their own braces. Obviously, different sized ensembles have different sized scores. The string quartet here on the left is a four staff score. A staff for first violin, second violin, viola, and cello. The full orchestra score here on the right has so many staffs per page, it either has to be so tiny you can barely read it, or so big you can barely lift it. Now let's take a closer look at this orchestral score. First, let's look at the flute section. Point one. The score is almost always arranged from high to low, which puts the high piccolo on top, flute one and two underneath. But also, in the orchestra, the flute section is the highest section, so they're going to be at the very top of the orchestral score as well. Point two. Notice that within a larger woodwind brace, the first and second flutes have their own more detailed brace. Like instruments are braced together. If you're playing instruments like, they'll have a brace. Even within the brass section, there'll be braces within braces. Three. Notice the cute little eight va treble clef on the piccolo part. This tells us that the piccolo is a transposing instrument. It sounds an octave higher than written. Notice that all the C key signatures are the same. This indicates that all the instruments are pitched the same. In this case, all the flutes are C instruments. 
Now let's take a look at the entire woodwind section. Notice one, all like instruments are grouped together. Piccolo and flute, oboe and English horn, three clarinet parts, and two bassoons. They all have their own braces within this large woodwind brace. Two, several transposition issues are present. The piccolo eight va, written an octave higher than it sounds, the English horn in F, written a fifth higher than it sounds. The clarinet in E flat, written a minor third lower than it sounds. The clarinet in B flat, written a whole step higher than it sounds. The bass clarinet, written a whole step plus one octave higher than it sounds, always in treble cliff. And the contrabassoon, eight va basso, written an octave higher than it sounds. So as you can see, the transposition issue in reading a score is uh, fairly critical. I mean, it, in this woodwind section of piccolo, flute, oboe, English horn, clarinet and E flat, clarinet and B flat, bassoon and contrabassoon, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different transpositions, not to mention the key of C. The flutes are in, the flute one and two and the oboe are the only instruments in this whole list, uh, and the bassoon. Uh, they're the only ones that read in C. All the others are, are, are transposed in some way or other. Now, when a conductor looks at all these things, he not only has to see um, the tonal relationships and rhythmic relationships between the parts, but he has to go through this process of, of changing from, from one key to another. Now, this comes from experience, and um, uh, we'll talk about the C score in a minute, but... Um, the, the hot issue is that uh, the remember that the reason these transpositions for the instruments exist is because of instrument design. There are certain things about the way these instruments are pitched that makes them finger and play better in these weird keys. W wish it were not so. Wish, for instance, that maybe everybody just used a movable C clef uh, to keep from uh, having to deal with ledger lines. But it's not. It's more than ledger lines. It's 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 key signatures too. So. Um, knowing the instruments uh, helps you interpret not only the, the uh, transposition that they're playing in, but the range they're playing in in their particular instrument. And, and if you're a good conductor, you know what each instrument sounds in each one of its ranges. And um, knowing where it's being played has a lot to do with how you direct the people to play their parts. Going on to the brass section, notice one, all like instruments are bracketed together. Horns one and two, trumpets one and two, trombones one and two. All this within a larger section, a brass section bracket. Two, for historical reasons, the higher pitched trumpet part is written below the French horn part in the score. This is the only common exception to the high to low rule. Normally all parts even within a section. The higher pitched ones are above and the lower ones go down. Uh, the French horn, I believe, used to be part of the woodwind section in the Mozart symphonies and whatnot, and so it, um, it's still sort of listed above the trumpet part for, for that reason. Uh, it, like I say, it's the only exception to the high to low rule. Third issue, transposition issues are present. The French horn in F is written a fifth higher than it sounds, and the trumpet in B-flat is written a whole step higher than it sounds. Now let's take a look at the percussion section of the score. The percussion section area of the score, it's uh, about two-thirds of the way down always, it's kind of a garbage section. There's a whole, a whole bunch of stuff thrown in there that won't fit anywhere else. Uh, but um, all the percussion instruments, including the harp, which is not a percussion instrument, and the piano, which is not really a percussion instrument. All these are in the back of the orchestra, so it makes sense for them to be graphically reproduced in the score all in the same spot. Whether they're percussion instruments or not is really moot at this point. Take a closer look at the percussion section. The timpani is at the top. Then we have this non-clef percussion clef. It means that there's no pitch. This clef is constantly redesigned by composers for every piece. They put the drums on different lines. The harp, as I mentioned, is in the back of the orchestra. 
and so is the orchestral piano. Here's the string section. Let's uh, notice two things. All the strings are grouped together under one bracket, and there are two transposition issues. The viola is written in alto clef. Now get used to the alto clef because you're going to have to read viola music and all kinds of stuff written in alto clef. So get on it, learn it. And the contrabass is uh, written eight va basso. It's written an octave higher than it sounds. This transposition is very often uh, ignored in the score. In other words, the cello part and the bass part are exactly the same, and the bass just doubles the cello down an octave. Now there are two kinds of instrumental scores. The one we've been looking at is the transposed score, the one where each part in the score is the same as the part that the instrumentalist has on his music stand. Their kind of score is a score in C, in which the parts are not transposed into their, into their instrumental transpositions, but are written in the correct key and the correct octave, um, as li like you could play it on a piano. Uh, as a conductor, I'm conflicted on the subject of the score in C. On the one hand, it is a lot less mental hassle to read the whole score in one key. But on the other hand, familiarity with various instrumental idiosyncrasies, like the alto sax has trouble making this low note sound, or the piccolo is glaringly too loud in this register, it's made it desirable for me to view the parts as the players see them. From a practical standpoint, from a playing standpoint, I can understand what's supposed to happen and what I have to tell the players better if it is written in a transposed. But still, when you're learning a piece, to have to go through all that transposition is very mind-boggling, and it's a, it's a real drag. If you practice anything, you can get good at it, but if you don't want to especially get good at it, a C score is a good option. Uh, so I suggest getting a piece that exists in both a transposed version and a C version, and go back and forth between them, and begin to see how they relate to each other, and you're going to get better at score reading either way, and you may at that point be able to decide which uh, version of the score you prefer. Score reading is a fundamental skill every musician must acquire. Musicians should be able to look at a score and imagine the sounds in their heads. The music of an instrumental piece is not just your part. It is all the parts. When you're playing a piece, you need to not just be listening to your part, but be listening to all the parts so you can see how your part relates to the others. A musician who cannot reference the score to settle matters of balance, you're too loud, well, I have the theme. Uh, what about that bowing? It sticks out. Interpretation, fingering, bowing, breathing, etc. If you can't look at a score and interpret what it says, then you can't make any sort of decisions like this, and you will never be able to penetrate to the depths of a great piece of music.